You'll never walk again. How would you feel hearing those words? And how would you go living with them for the rest of your life? Well, I've just met two determined young Australians who refuse to accept the doctor's verdict. Josh Clift and Amanda Boxtel believe there had to be a way to get their legs working again. So they travelled halfway around the world in search of a miracle to a place that's right at the cutting edge of spinal research. And with doctors recently announcing they've just helped a paraplegic to stand up and move, it seems that miracle isn't so very far away. There's nothing quite like the theatrics of American gridiron. Both on and off the field, it's a world away from the Hunter Valley and the no-frills rugby matches Josh Cliff used to star in. Josh loves it all. Reaches, touchdown Atlanta. But this 28-year-old farmer was never one to sit on the sidelines. Touchdown. It's I'd give anything to be out there putting a hit on someone or taking a hit up myself. I think my mum would crucify me if she saw me out there these days. What do you reckon crowd-wise tonight? It's a sellout, so you've probably got about 80,000. 80,000. Josh became a quadriplegic through a chain of disaster that almost defies belief. Now he's fighting back here in Atlanta at the Shepherd Center. And we'll start at 2.0, here we go. The most advanced facility in the world for spinal injuries. There you go, keep lifting. From day dot, I've never had a dream where I'm not walking. I've never pictured myself not walking. Like me? Not that quick. <laughs> but um, the reality is, I'd say to be walking on a, on a walking stick, that'd be, that'd be heaven for me. This feels great. Good stuff. Whatever movement that he's got and feeling below his level of injury, he needs to work, work, work at it so that maybe he'll be able to do it on his... And I believe this man can. So you get a kick out of seeing him on this? Oh, an absolute kick out of it. No pun intended, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Boxtel is another extraordinary Australian I met at the Shepherd Centre. I walk on this contraption at home called an Alter G treadmill and it... Together, she and Josh are a formidable pair. One, two, three. Both set on defying conventional medical wisdom about their paralysis. Look. Let's work on the left one. Just those words, you'll never walk again. It was like being given a death sentence. And from that moment, I just became determined, determined to prove him wrong. Certainly ain't beach weather, though. I <laughs> know, oh, it's not beach weather. <laughs> it'd be nice to be in a bikini right now, but no, I love it. <laughs> but for all Amanda's sheer spirit, it's a hard road she's been travelling on for 18 years now. You're all equipped. Yeah. I just long to run on the sand and feel the sand squeak in between my toes and to have waves chase me, and, and I can't. Is that all right? Perfect. For Josh, to realise his dream of walking again means up to six hours of exhausting therapy a day. Really squeeze these shoulders down. Josh has a chance because his spinal cord, although severely damaged, wasn't severed. Another 10 seconds. Ever feel like curling up in a ball and saying, you know what, this is all too hard? That's the easy option, but it definitely happens. Yeah, everyone has bad days, shit days. It's life. There's always someone worse off than you. Josh Clift was a champion schoolboy footballer for Sydney St Joseph's College, later representing New South Wales country. But then in July 2008, in this incident in the Scone versus Tamworth match, Josh's football career came to a sickening halt. Heard a noise in the tackle and just, I don't know, it was a sixth sense. Something had just drastically gone wrong, I think, and thought I'd broken my neck. What was the noise? 
thousand plates breaking, I guess, like just the, the crack. Josh crunched three vertebrae, but luck was on his side this time. At Sydney's Royal North Shore Hospital, a plate was permanently screwed into his neck, giving him a second chance. Josh was able to walk out of hospital and within weeks was rounding up the cattle, being a farmer. Life was back on track, but only for a moment. Late one night and within sight of home, an exhausted Josh fell asleep at the wheel of his ute on this stretch of road. What happened next? Well, that's almost too cruel to be true. Woke up as I was about to hit a fence and overcorrected. The tyre clipped the pothole and flipped. Flipped the car numerous times. It was close to midnight when the phone rang at the Clift homestead. Josh's dad, Jonathan, raced down to the crash site. It was the worst thing I've ever seen, you know, because he was just in the middle of the road in a pool of blood um, and, like, unconscious. And I thought, oh, jeez, you know, how can you, uh, how can you go through this again? I thought I was an amputee. When I first woke up, all I thought was a, I was a head. But then they said, you've broken your neck again. You're a quadriplegic. And I thought, well, geez, this didn't feel like the first time. In the space of three months, Josh had broken his neck twice. But here in the farming heartland of the New South Wales Hunter Valley, they breed them tough. On your way. Good. Travel safe, bye darling, catch you later. And so in 2009, Josh and his family made the difficult decision to set out in pursuit of a miracle. I mean, obviously you had teary moments and things, but he said, why me? And I said, well, because you'll cope, you'll cope, you're strong. Really, and I think he has proven that. In spades. In spades. Yeah. That's right. Have you ever wavered, Wendy? Oh, of course I do. Mm. Yeah. That's in the shower, <laughs> behind the scenes, on a car trip on my own. What could the Shepherd Centre offer you that Australia couldn't? The fact that instead of doing one hour of physio a day, I was going just straight into six hours of intense therapy. Is that a criticism of treatment available here in Australia? It's not a criticism, it's just the fact is we're just so far behind. Thank you. And it's in Atlanta you realise how far behind we are. Here Amanda Boxtel has come to demonstrate a revolutionary invention called e-legs. I love it, we're all standing together, mostly. <laughs> Josh, you and I, next time, huh? <laughs> Good day. <laughs> I get to be a Aussie again. Yeah. Hi, you give me a high five, don't push me over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? <laughs> but slow and steady wins a race, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll keep at your pace. E-legs could be the most significant development since the wheelchair was invented 500 years ago. But this is freedom. This is freedom. Peter. Amanda's arm movement sends signals to a small computer in her backpack to activate battery-powered legs. So it's gesture activated and there's a sensor in the bottom of the crutch so that I'm able to just literally place a crutch and take a step. Place a crutch and take a step. And it's the coolest thing because it's independence. I mean, this is it. Bye. <laughs> Originally from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Amanda was paralysed 18 years ago in a skiing accident in Aspen, Colorado. She too refused to accept the diagnosis. She was forever bound to her wheelchair. They call you the test pilot. Not to be confused with crash test dummy. <laughs> I'm a test pilot and I can't get enough air time. And I've got about... <laughs> And I've got about um, oh, 20 hours clocked under my belt on these legs. I get to leg up now. 
Isn't that cool? It, you are cool. <laughs> One of the most beautiful things is now I get to have real hugs. Is that and an invitation? <laughs> yes. Do you want a hug? I'll give you Do a I hug. hug? <laughs> For all the joy E-Legs brings Amanda, there's still years of research before this technology is broadly available. But you haven't been able to do that? No. But the Shepherd Centre is at the forefront of another revolution, stem cell treatment. How's it feel up there? You know, it's been going really well. Dr Donald Leslie is supervising some of the first formal tests on the controversial science of taking cells from a human embryo and injecting them into a patient. It's already worked on paralysed rats. A stem cell is a cell that has not matured yet. And you take a single cell, you place that right at the area where the spinal cord is injured with hopes that that cell will transform into more cells which will allow recovery of the neural process. So a stem cell is like a repair kit? Hopefully a repair kit. That's what we want it to, to do. Amanda Boxtel hasn't waited for the results of formal studies. Instead, heading to India for her stem cell treatment. This is the magic step. Here we go. It's unregulated and some say reckless, but Amanda swears by the results. Because of stem cells, I'm the proud owner of quads, glutes, hamstrings, abductors, adductors, flickers of calf muscles. I can pee on my own, bowels are coming back, <laughs> and I can orgasm for the first time in 18 years. I mean, what's not to love about that? <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> stem cell treatment is controversial. What would you say to the objectors? I think they need to sit in a wheelchair. Walk in my shoes or sit in my wheelchair? Yeah, that's it. It's the way of the future and for people to be against it, like, it's kind of like being against the cure to cancer. Yeah. You want more? That's fine. It's not a twoies, mate. <laughs> it's not a twoies, is it? No. <laughs> Let's go to 2-4. Josh hopes stem cell treatment could one day work for him. Now, take your weight to the centre, Josh. Meanwhile, thanks to this rehab program, he can now move his arms and has some sensation in his legs. Good stuff. That, incredibly, are back to the same size as his rugby days. Feels great. One, two, three. The milestones may be slow in coming. I know. Yeah, that's good but they are monumental when they arrive, like when Josh was first able to move this frame. We probably walked six metres, and it was the longest six metres of my life, but yeah, it eclipsed anything I'd achieved sporting-wise previously. So yeah, it's a hard game, it's a pretty tough fight, but it's easily the most satisfying. Can you win this boxing match? Yeah. Yeah, I'll win, but just underestimate him a bit in the first few rounds. <laughs>